What's going on everybody? My name is Alex Freeberg and today I'm gonna to talk about how I switched careers to become a data analyst. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe. And let's get into it. So before I go into the actual applying and working with recruiters and getting a job, I wanna talk about how I prepared before I actually started applying to jobs. You have to remember that I was just starting out and I really didn't have any of the necessary skills. So I really needed to boost my resume because I didn't have any experience at all. So I started researching some of the skills you absolutely needed just to get started as a data analyst. And the number one thing that I found was SQL. So I went on YouTube, I looked at the basics of SQL and started learning everything that I could. And once I felt that I had a good grasp on it, I put that on my resume. So once I did that, I had my data analyst resume ready and I was ready to start applying for jobs. I went on my page on LinkedIn and there's this place where you can notify people that you're looking for jobs. And I said I was looking for a junior data analyst, entry level data analyst or data analyst jobs. And once I did that, I attached my resume to my profile so that recruiters could see it and see my experience. So I started getting messages from recruiters on jobs that they thought I was gonna be a good fit for. And at one point I was working with about five recruiters and you have to remember that these people are there to get you a job. You know, they work off commission. And so if you get a job, they're gonna make money. And so they are really motivated to help you. So I'm not gonna go too much into the recruiter process, but I will make a whole nother video for that. But when I was working with a recruiter, they coached me on what to do and they talked me through the process of actually getting hired. They did the phone interviews, they sent over my documents to the company that I was applying for. And then they helped coach me a little bit on some of the things that the company is looking for. And so I started getting lots of phone interviews because the recruiter was setting up phone interviews for me with the company. And before a phone interview, I would try to research the company and see what they did. And so that when I actually got on the call, I could say, yes, you know, I've looked into your company and here are the skills that I think would be a really good fit. And I think that showed a little bit of preparation, but for the most part, anything that they asked me to do, or if they asked if I had a specific skill, I most of the time said yes. And they really just asked high level things about my skill sets and what I was able to do. And I would always just say yes, so that I could get to that in-person interview. And I felt like if I got to the in-person interview, I would get the job because there are a lot of things that I couldn't put on a resume, like my personality and my customer service abilities. Those are the things that I think I really demonstrated well in an interview. So I finally got some job offers and I realized that none of them were full-time positions. They were either contract work or contract to hire work. And that made me really nervous because I'd never done either of those before. I'd only ever had a full-time job and I had a family. And so I didn't want to go into a contract job and get fired three months in and then have no job. So I was really, really nervous. So I ended up accepting a job that I was a little bit more comfortable with. It was at a healthcare analytics company and I have a background in healthcare. So I felt like my domain knowledge would help me out a lot. And it was a six month contract to hire. And so for six months I was contracting through the recruiting company. And then after that, they ended up hiring me on as a full-time employee. I have to be honest though, it was a really tough process and it took me a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. I think it ended up taking me about four months to land my first job. And I worked with maybe seven or eight recruiters during that whole time. And I got lots and lots of phone interviews. I got a few in-person interviews and it was just really tough. It was very competitive. I'm in Dallas, Texas. And so there's a really large opportunity, but a very big population who's all trying to apply for the same jobs that I'm applying to. And so I would go on Indeed or Glassdoor and I could see that 80 other people or 100 other people apply for that job. So when I wouldn't get a callback for a job or I get a phone interview and I wouldn't get a callback, it was really demoralizing because I felt like all those other people who applied had better degrees or better experience or better skills than I did. So it was really tough to keep applying to jobs when I felt like everybody else was doing better than I was. But like I said, I was able to get a job, but I really feel for all those people who are applying and applying and applying and are not getting callbacks and are not getting interviews and aren't able to land that job because I was there at one point. And so I've had lots of people message me since I've started this channel and they just said, you know, here's where I'm at, what can I do to get better? And I've tried to give them any advice that I can. So if you have a resume or you want any advice or have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will answer any question that I think I can answer. And if I can't answer it, I'll try to point you in the direction of somewhere where you can get a good answer. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.